My dad has taught me so many things. One of those things is to photograph and to document the people that you love. My, my dad, dad always, always had, had a camera. camera. He had a two and a quarter uh, box camera that he shot a lot of things with. Uh, he had movie camera. Uh, I, I always remember him waking us up. My brother and I slept in the same bedroom and uh, he had these lights, these four big spot spotlights walking in with his brownie eight millimeter camera. And we're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, and, and he, sh you know, because my dad, you know, he, he was into it. He was, he loved his family. And, um, you know, he knew how precious that was. His early life was um, interrupted by World War II. You know, he went to to fight when uh, he was a teenager, went to Bastogne and, and the Battle of the Bulge, and was a medic and carried men dying off the field. You know, he understood life and he understood how precious it was. And so he documented us pretty well. Like my father, I wanted to document what was happening with my children. When I went to the press, they offered me a job with the uh, youth page. So I did this assignment for the um, poetry festival and the cover image was one that I had shot for that Sunday. And the people at Grand Valley were like, do you think we could buy some pictures from you? And I'm like, of course you can. Eventually Grand Valley sends me to Europe to photograph their international studies program. That gave me a, um, a taste for how important travel was to photography. You know, going to Europe, it's probably 26 or 27 at the time. Well, it was 1976, I was 27. And so, you know, that, I learned a lot. You know, I was by myself. I traveled from place to place, hopped on a train, got on the Orient Express in Paris and, and went to Belgium into Yugoslavia. Couldn't have paid for that. When I started doing commercial photography, I was pretty much trying to recreate what I did as a journalist. So I got a studio and I started shooting products. My buddy Fulton, uh, he had a uh, 73 Red 911 uh, target. And I don't know if he still had that at the time when I bought mine, I think he did. Uh, Starkey had a, a turbo 911. <laughs> I mean, the guys at the press were into Porsches and Leicas, right? And so I'm like, well, I got money, I'll go we'll buy a Porsche. Started looking at used Porsches, didn't feel like buying a new one for some reason, in Dutch. You know? When I went to Africa, I was shooting about a thousand pictures a day, and when I came back, I realized that my true love in life was, was photography, and it didn't matter to me as much uh, at that time how much money I made. I was more interested in just what my activity was gonna be. You know, back to when I started as a photographer, my focus was, I just wanna make a living doing something I love. And at a certain point, I lost that because I got competitive and I wanted to see how much money I could make compared to everybody else and how far I could climb. And <clears throat> when I did climb to the point where I thought was the ultimate was I was doing national ad campaigns, I enjoyed it. It was fun, I liked that, but it was not as fulfilling always as what you think it is when you get there, when you've already done it. It's like Steve Jobs said, it's, it's about the journey. I get a lot of satisfaction in doing the stuff I do for Christian Leaders Institute. Talking to people whose lives had a really bad start, that have overcome that bad start, made good decisions, and are out there helping other people that have had bad starts to their life, that's pretty rewarding. I have to say that I look at my, my whole life as kind of leading up to the ability to do this thing. It's, that's rewarding to know that you maybe changed a person's life. Didn't sell them, you know, selling them something. Yeah, okay. You know, changing a life. That's kind of special for me.
Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. I think that personal projects are super fun to do, but also sometimes the most challenging projects to do. I actually almost uh, lost my SL2S and my 50 Sumalux on this shoot because a microphone stand fell and almost took it out. But even at 75, my dad caught the camera. That's some good reflexes. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really does make a huge difference. And if you've got any comments, please leave them down below. And I'll see you in the next video.